This is to all those who've been listening to old time radio that I've been podcasting for 12 years. It's time for you to purchase the old time radio collection now at the lowest prices ever. 500 gigabyte external hard drive chuck full of radio shows that we all love. And don't forget the bonuses. Here's my offer. I need everyone who hears my voice to go to oldtimeradiodvd.com to place your order today. With every order, I will include a comprehensive show guide with episode descriptions over 1982 pages this is truly once in a lifetime deal place your order today at oldtimeradiodvd.com you will be glad you did it's hop along cassidy with action and suspense out of the old west comes the most famous hero of them all hop along cassidy Starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Failure. No question about it, Branch Patterson was a spellbinder. A quiet, crafty man for three years out of every four. When an election year came around, he blossomed out, slapped folks on the back, became the good, good friend of every citizen of Shotwell. So right now, in this good year of 1886, Branch is in his glory as usual, on the speaker's platform among the red, white, and blue bunting, letting the people know as only Branch can. Now, uh, I've told you a lot about Ike Iverson. I like to call him Honest Ike Iverson. Yes, sir, boy. All right, I'm not through. No, sir, not by a long sight. I have here a letter from old Evan Harden, our beloved sheriff who's retiring from office after so many years of good service to this community. Now, uh, as you all know, old Evan's taking it easy back in the big city, New York. He says here, Dear Branch, I want you to know I'm getting along fine here in New York. The weather's been fine these past two weeks, and I'm having myself a good rest. The reason I'm writing is to congratulate you and the rest of the folks in Shotwell on your choice of Ike Iverson as my successor. There ain't a man in Shotwell can fill my boots better than Ike. And I wish him all the luck in the world. Signed, Evan K. Hart. Now, I can't add much to that, but I think you all know by now that a vote for Honest Ike Iverson is a vote for law and order in Shotwell County. Now, I think that steer's about done to a turn, and there's plenty of roasted corn and free drinks for all. Free drinks! Oh, yeah. Dad, he puts on a nice show. Yeah, he sure does, Hoppy. Once every four years. Hmm. I wonder now if it was worth the ride. I'm an awful long ways from the bar toilet. Yeah. By the way, where's California? Oh, I left him behind to run things for me. This election's kind of a personal thing with me anyway, and sure. I... Sure. But what can we do? That's a good question. Oh, uh... <laughs> Don't mean to butt in. I just saw you sitting here, and I figured there must be three of us around to see through that four-flusher. Yeah, and we won't count much in an election. Oh, I'm uh, Hopalong Cassidy, and this is Janie Malloy. How do you How do? You do? Janie runs the newspaper here in Shotwell. My name's Ted. I have a ranch over Dakota Way on the Little Missouri. Or I had one. What do you mean? I just sold it. I guess I'm a failure at ranching, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I'm not giving up. 28, you know. Got a few good years left in me. (laughs) Well, I should think so. I thought I'd drop by here before I take the train back east. Get a look at Western politics in action. I'm a little disappointed. (laughs) You mean it's different back there? No, it's the same. (laughs) Give people a good time, a free barbecue, promise them the moon, and get yourself elected. Say, uh, who's running against Honest Ike? 
Well... It just might be a very fine, upstanding young man named Bill Dixon, who also happens to be Janie's fiancé. <laughs> hmm. He's luckier in love than he is in politics. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, what are you going to do? Sit around and let this barbecuer run off with the election? Grant Patterson owns this town from one end of Main Street to the other. Then it should be a delightful battle. Delightful. Huh? I've already decided to let my trip east wait for a while. Mr. Patterson comes first. We must defeat him. <laughs> Good. You just tell us how, Ted. And, now you uh... tell me this. How did Patterson get along with Mr. Harden, the former sheriff? Not at all. Harden was the only man in town he couldn't control. What about the letter, Ted? Sound right to you? No. Yeah. There's a chink in Mr. Patterson's armor, I'm afraid. According to the letter, Mr. Harden is comfortably retired in New York, delighted with the weather there. Well, according to a friend who just wrote to me, it's been raining cats and dogs there for a solid month. Uh-huh. Which means, of course, that Mr. Harden isn't in New York or any place near it. And if he isn't there... Where is he? A man from the East, a man who calls himself a failure, has sparked Hoppy's curiosity about the coming election for sheriff of Shotwell County and the letter from Evan Harden, the outgoing sheriff supposedly written from New York. It's late at night, after the barbecue, that Hoppy walks through the Star Saloon to Branch Patterson's office. Hi, Mr. Cassidy. Hello, Hoppy. Hello, how are you? Well, howdy, Hoppy. Hello. Yeah, come in. Hello, Branch. Well, hop along, Cassidy. Why, you old varmint, I haven't seen you for years. Yeah, sit down, sit down. Hi. Yeah, have a cigar? No, thanks, Branch. Yeah, what brought you to Shotwell, Hoppy? <laughs> maybe I come to get a free dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's just that I'm curious about you and old Evan Harden. What about me and Evan Harden? Uh, last I heard, you two were at each other's throats. Seems the sheriff's office was the only thing in town you couldn't control. Oh, me and Evan ha had an understanding, finally. He, uh, mellowed as he got older. He must have mellowed awful fast. He was at the bar 20 a few months ago and told me he was going to get your hide. Yeah, like I said, he changed a lot. Maybe so. By the way, uh, where's Bert? Bert? Bert Holiday. Used to be your number one assistant. Oh, Bert's going to Colorado. Yeah, going to open up a new place for me there. I see. Uh, well, Cassidy, I don't want to rush you off, but I've got a lot of work to clear up here, and I... Sure, sure. Oh, just one other thing, uh... Mind if I take a look at that letter from Evan? For oh, any particular reason? Yeah, I owe the old boy some money. I want to send it to him in New York. I see. Well, I don't want to open the safe now, but he's living at the Hudson View Hotel there on uh, 65th Street. Thanks, Branch. That ought to do it. Oh, and Cassidy. Yeah? When you write to him, uh, send him my love, will you? Sure. Cassidy? Hello. Hello, Hoppy. Hi, then. Cassidy. Oh, there you are. Well, any luck? I don't know. Patterson says he's living at the Hudson View Hotel. I know the place on 65th. Come on, let's get down to the telegraph office. message going to New York? Yeah. Here, I'll read it to you. Mr. Joseph Alderwood, 684 Park Avenue, New York City. Urgent you wire description of man residing Hudson View Hotel under name of Evan K. Harden. Hire Pinkerton operative if necessary. Oh, uh, here's my name. I'm staying here at the Golden. I... Oh, I know it, Hoppy, but you can't win an election on suspicion. What about that, Ted? <laughs> That's all they had against Boss Tweed to begin with. You, uh, you don't know this town. Branch Patterson owns it. The voters are behind him to a man. We had our Branch Pattersons in New York State. We got rid of them. And I don't think voters out here are any different. Well, what do you want me to do? Get up and tell them Branch Patterson is a crook? 
But I think the letter from Harden's a forgery. Bill, by the time we're through, you'll be able to tell him more than that. Like what? We don't think Evan Harden's alive. Huh? What are you talking about? We got an idea Branch killed him and faked that trip to New York. Hey, that's pretty strong stuff. Can you prove it? We're going to try. Now, how do you feel about running now? Sure, I'll run. If you give me the ammunition. Okay, it might take some digging, but we'll get it. Oh, no, Mr. Cassidy, I thought you'd gone up to bed. Sorry, Miss Anderson. I didn't mean to startle well, you. Well, I, I just ain't used to having rumors round again. Sure, it's only been a month or so since Sheriff Harden went east. Please, don't talk about Sheriff Harden. I miss him so much. I... He was a rumor here for a long time. Twenty years. Yeah. Wonder why he suddenly decided he'd like it better in New York. I ain't a mind reader, Mr. Cassidy, and I'm running a room in house, not an information bureau. Kind of jumpy, aren't you? I ain't jumpy. Okay, Miss Anderson. I don't want to upset you. It's just that I'm mighty fond of old Evan Harden, too. He... He was a wonderful man. Was? Well, I mean, it's almost like he's gone forever. Way off in New York. Sure, I know. Uh, did you see him off? What do you mean? The night he left town. Did you help him pack or anything? I didn't see him till around midnight when he was about to leave. His horse was saddled outside waiting. Remember what he had on? Now, see here, Mr. Cassidy, you <laughs> can't... I'm just testing your memory, Miss Anderson. He had on a salt and pepper suit, a black Stetson, a red tie and tan high heel boots. And that's all the talking I intend to do about Sheriff Harden. Sorry, I, I guess I'm just naturally nosy. Ah, that's mighty nice piano you got here. Looks new. Steve? Must have cost a piece of money. I just come into a legacy. Yeah? That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cassidy, I didn't get the question. I just asked if you knew Evan Harden. Sheriff Harden? Sure, sure I knew Evan. Uh, I still know him, I reckon. That is, if I ever see him again. Were you on duty here at the station the night he uh, took the train east? Yeah, yeah, I took number 68. I remember old Evan rolling up in that buckboard of his, come up and shook my hand. And there was tears in his eyes. Hated to leave Shotwell after 20 years. Yeah, I guess he did. Do you remember what he was wearing? Sure. A salt and pepper suit, black Stetson, red tie, and tan high-heeled boots. His city-going clothes, I reckon. Hmm. Did it strike you as strange, um, having pulling out for the East after all these years? Not strange. Sensible. Just what I'm going to do next week. Oh? Going to leave this burg and head East myself. Time I started taking life easy. <laughs> you must have saved your money. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I saved my money. Well, Ike, what's the latest? We've tailed Cassidy day and night for a week now. He's been asking questions all over town. Look, Branch, I'm getting uneasy about Shut this. Shut up. I told you I had it fixed, and it's going to stay fixed. Someone's going to spill. Forget it. They won't talk, because they know what'll happen if they do. I hope you were right. Yeah. Have a cigar, Ike. Yeah. Right? Ah, that's better. Now, you're my boy, Ike. You're going to win this election, and you're going to stay right in my pocket where you belong. We'll do big things together here in Shotwell County. Now, you leave Cassidy to me. Run out and slap a few more backs. After all, Ike... You're the town hero, aren't you? The people's choice. Well, Hoppy, it's you. Hello, Bill. Janie, Dad. Hi, Hi Hoppy. <laughs> Hop along, Cassidy, private investigator. Well, how'd you come up? <laughs> Uh, I'm a horse for asking questions, and I've got sore feet, but i got a lot of answers, too. Well, what are they? Harden left the rooming house at 11.30, took the creek road to the station, got there after midnight, or so the stories go. Uh, witnesses? That's the funny part. There are two. 
Hester Anderson at the rooming house and the ticket agent at the station. No one else? No one. Well, nothing wrong with that. It was late at night. Only he must have passed the Peters place on the way. Mark was Harden's best friend around here. And he was up all that night with a phone there. Why didn't Harden stop in to say goodbye? And here's another thing. Uh, Ted. Yeah? I guess you'd better tell him. What's the matter? What's eating all of you? Afraid we made a slight error, Hoppy. Huh? Wire came today. Read it, Tim. Yeah. Let's see here. It says, uh, checked Evan K. Harden. About 65, gray hair, six feet, 180 pounds, black dyed mustache, brown eyes, scar on left cheek, smokes corn cob. Hope this is sufficient. Joseph Alderwood. Well, that satisfy you, Hoppy? Yeah, it sure does. It's Harding's description to a T. It satisfies me that there's another guy in Patterson's bought-out gang I hadn't figured on. Hmm? Who's that? The telegraph operator. That wire never left his office. He ran up to Patterson's office with it and let him figure out the answer. You know, maybe he's right. Sure I'm right. The landlady and the ticket agent were bought and paid for. I could see the money in their eyes. Both of them had the same description of Harding on the night he left. Word for word. Can you remember what Janie wore 30 days ago, Bill? Can you? Well, well, no, Hoppy, but you can't. And another thing. According to their stories, Harden left the boarding house at 11.30 on horseback and pulled up at the station 45 minutes later driving a buckboard. By George, Hoppy bully for you. Well, where do we go from here? Ted, can you leave for New York tonight? Well, I hate to rush off, but I suppose I can. Good. You've got a job to do back there. What do you mean? Better get comfortable. I want to get things straight before Ted goes. Because if it comes off... Yeah? Patterson will go up for the murder of Evan Harden, and you'll be sheriff of Shotwell County. It's late at night... And eastbound number 68 is puffing up the grade a few miles out of Shotwell toward a pair of riders waiting in the shadows near the track. Well, here she comes, Ted, right on time. Not as convenient taking her on the fly this way, but we couldn't risk having you seen leaving for the east. Still think we're taking a chance? <laughs> Everything's a gamble in this country. <laughs> a lot will depend on you, though. I can take care of that. My George has done me a lot of good watching you fellas work. Don't feel like a failure anymore. <laughs> I don't believe you ever did. Matter of fact, there are a couple of pieces of unfinished business in the East I think I'll tackle while I'm back. Give it the old Cassidy treatment, huh? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you forget about Cassidy. Grab that rail. Here you go now. Got it. Hey, remember to ship my baggage. Coming up by fast freight. So long, Mr. Uh, Mr. So long, Hoppy. Mr. Uh, say, what was that fella's last name? Hello, Branch. Well, Cassidy, I'm kind of late for a sarsaparilla drinker, aren't you? Had an errand to run. Huh? Yeah. Offhand, I can't think of anything I like to do less than eat crow, Branch, but sometimes it has to be done. Well, I'm a willing listener. I made some cracks I'm sorry for, and I want to apologize. Really? Yeah, I may as well lay it on the line, Branch. I thought Evan Harden was dead. I thought that letter you read at the barbecue was a phony. Guess I'm just naturally not a trusting soul. So I sent a wire to New York and got my ears pinned back. Harden's living at the Hudson View, all right, fit as a fiddle. Why are you telling me all this, Cassidy? Uh, because I might have done you some damage. Asking questions around town and all. I had a good reason, of course. What but, reason? Uh, Miss Anderson. Uh, you knew I was staying at her rooming house. What about Miss Anderson? First night I stayed there, she woke me up, walking down the hallway in her sleep, talking a mile a minute about Evan Harden being murdered. Ah, oh, is that so? Yeah. Seems to me she mentioned your name a couple of times, but I couldn't quite make it out. Well, anyway, that's what started me off on the wrong foot. Did she, uh, she say anything else? Well, she did it almost every night for a week. Did an awful lot of talking. Said she was afraid someone was going to kill her because she knew too much. Long about then, I realized she was crazy. Mm -hmm. That all? Well, toward the last, she got pretty wild. Said murder had been committed in her house, and 
she was an avenging angel. Well, that was last night, just before she took off. Uh, took off? Yeah, haven't you heard? What? Miss Anderson ran off early this morning. Nobody knows where she went. Well, anyway, I wanted you to know the whole story, Branch. If you hear anybody spreading gossip around about you, just send them to me and I'll straighten them out. Yeah, yeah. Sure, thanks. Good night, Branch. Good night. Ike. Yeah, what is it? Uh, old Lady Anderson's gone crazy. Run off somewhere. Crazy? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. But she's talking. Now get the boys together. Tell them to get in the saddle and stay there until they find her. Confound it, I quit pacing the floor. Shut up, Branch. Oh, getting smart, huh? Getting too big for your britches. I've had a belly full of you and your crazy schemes. <laughs> Don't worry, Ike. They won't talk. They're afraid of me. Big Bad Branch Patterson. I got the Indian sign on it. <laughs> that won't do you no good, Branch. Nah, nothing's going to do us any good now. Shut up, you hear me? Knock off Harden, bribe yourself a set of witnesses, and grab the sheriff's office. Just like that. Don't look so easy now, does it? Well, that dame running around the hills for a week now, off her nuts, screaming that we killed him. Okay, I... Put the gun down, Branch. You wouldn't plug me in the back room of your own saloon, would you? No, that wouldn't be smart. You'd have me shot out in the hills somewhere and bribe yourself a few witnesses. Give me that gun. Let me, I... Let go, I... Branch, wait! Stop, let go, I... Drop the gun. Okay. What is it, Willis? Look, Hawaii just came in down to the telegraph office. Lucky I was on duty instead of the relief. Ah, uh, what is it? Uh, that's from New York. Holiday. Hester Anderson arrived here, went to authorities, told them where Harden lives. Pinkerton should arrive, shot well tomorrow. Holiday. Where Harden lives? I couldn't say more on a wire. She told him where we put the body in the mine shaft at Connor's Bluff. What are we going to do, Branch? We better get out of here. No, no, no. That's no good. They can't get us if they can't find Harden's body, prove he's dead. You mean that... Yeah. Come on. We're going out and get rid of it. This time for keeps. Uh, hold the light up. Uh, that's it. I think it's farther on. Yeah, you were too scared that night to remember. Yeah, here's the place. I remember that quartz vein on the wall. Hurry, we haven't much time. Ah, uh, come on, Ike. How deep is it? Yeah, never mind that. Just move rocks. Hold that light up, Willis. I'm doing the best I can. Hey, wait a minute. Listen. Listen. That noise. Somebody's over there. Get the light, Willie. No, you don't. Stay right where you are. <laughs> Cassidy. Get your hands up, Brent. <laughs> Ooh. You ought to know better than that, Branch. Okay, Cassidy. How'd you get here? We've been tailing you all week, waiting for you to get our telegram. Your, your telegram? Yeah, a friend of ours in New York sent it and signed Holiday's name. Uh, he's in custody, by the way. Yeah, but what about Miss Anderson? She's resting comfortably out of Bill Dixon's ranch. Uh, by the way, uh, Bill's outside with a posse. Wanted me to tell you how much he appreciated your leading us to Sheriff Harden's body. Just in time for the election. It's election night in Shotwell, and the citizens are gathered on the Rodeo grounds for a torchlight celebration. Look at Bill up there on the stand, Happy. I'm so proud I could split. <laughs> oh, he's going to make a good sheriff, Janie. Wouldn't be surprised if there were some pretty drastic changes around here. What with you and your weekly editorials and Bill in charge of the law. It was a long chance. A lot of guesswork. But we won. Yeah, thanks to Ted. That wire from New York couldn't have come at a better time. Quiet, everyone. Uh-oh, here we go. Quiet, everyone. Quiet. I, uh, I've got a lot to say to you tonight. 
about what we're going to do together to make Shotwell a better place to live. You know, at another rally here not long ago, a young fellow walked up to us and told us Branch Patterson was a skunk. And it was high time someone got up enough nerve to lick him. Well, that fellow's in New York now, and I just got a telegram from him that I'd like to read to you. Bill Dixon, Sheriff, Shotwell County. Hope voters there have learned that good government is more important than a free barbecue every four years. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your election. Hope I have as much luck this November when I run for mayor of New York City. Regards, Teddy Roosevelt. We hope you'll be with us next time when Hopalong Cassidy will again ride out from the Bar 20 for another dangerous and exciting adventure of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The failure was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.